So when you install OBS Studio, this is what it looks like when uh, you first open it up. All the controls really are here. Project files essentially are these scene collections. Now these are ones that I've already made. Um, but the uh, default uh, scene collection just comes like this, just blank, nothing happening. We'll start at the bottom with scenes. So you start with a default scene, nothing in it, just called scene. And next to that is a box called sources. Now this is the thing that you use to build the scene. Add, you can see that you've got lots of different options for different types of, uh, of media. So if we add, in this case, a uh, video capture, I'm just going to add video capture device. I'm not going to bother renaming it. And there you go. You can see I've appeared in the top corner, upside down, hanging from the ceiling. Um, now, I've only got one camera connected to DroidCam, so it's only going to connect to that source. Well, I've got OBS virtual cameras, well, but I haven't got a camera connected to that at the moment. So what I can do is uh, right click on the uh, video and I can rotate it around 180 degrees. There you go. But it's also just a, a small screen in the corner. So I want that to be bigger. So I can either stretch it out manually, which means I can oversize it if I want to, uh, to overscale it. Or I can right click on here, tell it to fit to screen. And as you can see, it's put me upside down again. So this is the, the main camera. This is, this is the main scene. Uh, and I'm going to rename that scene so that it actually says something useful. So I'm going to call it main camera. That's all that we're going to put on it. We're not going to put anything else on that. So if any time I want to just have my face on, on screen, just have the one camera going, I just need to go back to that scene. But I'm going to use this camera in another scene. But I'm going to add other stuff to it. So I could start from scratch by clicking add. And this adds a new scene, which will be a blank scene. Or I can also duplicate this one by right clicking on it. You click on duplicate. But I'm going to call this uh, split screen. Uh, but as you can see, there's no difference between the two. They are both exactly the same. What it's done is copied the uh, the sources that are in there, which at the moment is just that one. So I'm going to slide this to one side, but I'm disappearing off the screen now. So what I'm going to do is slide it to there, and then I'm going to use my Alt key on the keyboard, and this is going to crop the video from both sides. So I'm about a third of the way across the screen. Now I'm going to add a, another camera, which in this case is going to be a phone camera. And I'm going to use DroidCam OBS. And it gives you this screen, which tells you what the IP address and the uh, port number is for uh, this camera. So I'm going to add to this scene another camera, but this time I'm going to use DroidCam OBS, which is specifically uh, for uh, webcams connected directly to OBS. Um, and I'm going to tell it that uh, I'm going to put that number in, 192, 10 port numbers already set. I could mess around with the resolution thing. I'm going to leave that alone for now. Um, and I'm not going to enable audio either because I've got a separate microphone which is uh, doing voice audio. I do need to activate it. Okay. Okay, so that camera's on there. As you can see, the orientation's wrong again. I could move the phone around until, until it's right, but I want it in this orientation. So I'm going to move, uh, I'm going to change this. I'm going to, uh, Transform that, first of all, by uh, rotating it uh, 90 degrees clockwise. And I'm actually just going to use the corner here. So now, 
we have two versions of me, that one and that one. Of course, this could be uh, for uh, looking at some detail. So this is the detail camera. If I'm going to be working on uh, on something with my hands, this, this is the detail camera for the hands. Uh, but what I do need to do is find some way to actually uh, keep this stable. So I need to, need to make myself a camera stand or some description. I normally use Lego. Then you look at the uh, the other camera camera stand I've got on here. That's Lego, and uh, this one's made of Lego. Because uh, I've got a lot of Lego, it's actually cheaper to buy a tripod than it is to buy a Lego and make a camera stand out of Lego. But anyway, so this is a uh, split screen. And now we can switch scenes and go between myself on on screen on one camera. And uh, right, let's go and have a look at some of the uh, some of the detail. So that's two cameras on screen, and two cameras for most people is enough. You can actually add as many cameras as uh, as your system will support, and have them all on screen at the same time. The more cameras you have, the more resources it's going to take, obviously. Isn't it? So I'm going to duplicate the split screen again. And the reason I'm doing that is to keep this in exactly the same place that the, uh, the first camera so that it doesn't jump across the screen. So it's in exactly the same spot. And I'm going to rename this as a slideshow. So this is how I'm going to do the slideshow. I'm not actually going to do uh, a slideshow in a traditional sense with the, like you do with the Zoom, where you uh, share the screen. I'm going to run the slideshow software, but it's going to actually uh, appear here at the side of me instead of uh, on uh, on its own screen. So, okay, so this is actually, it's not a slideshow, it's actually a PDF, uh, which I'm running in full screen on a different monitor. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add uh, and I'm going to uh, select from here uh, display capture, which is going to uh, allow me, and you see we've got the video feedback because it defaults to this display, but uh, I'm going to select display number three. And instantly my, my head is gone. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to crop the edge of that so that we only get the page size. And then I'm going to move it sideways until that's uh, that's on the side of the screen. So I'm going to lock these off so I can't move them by accident now. So now I've got this uh, presentation on this side of the screen. Now, uh, this is not designed for this presentation. This is actually just a PDF document. So it's probably not going to be very readable because there's a lot of tiny text, as you can see. But this basically is page of A4 at a time going through uh, this PDF document explaining the construction of a coronet. Uh, so let's assume that uh, this PDF has been made with this kind of presentation in mind. I would have uh, a lot less information on each page and uh, make sure the text, any text that does need to be there is actually uh, readable. So this is one way of doing it. And like I said, this is just a PDF that I'm, uh, I'm clicking through. So that's one way of doing it. So that's, that's display capture, capturing that entire display. Now that works also for uh, um, PowerPoint presentations. If you uh, capture the, the display screen, uh, exactly the same process, just display capture and decide which one it is. So long as the, uh, when you actually do the full presentation, the uh, software is running on that screen, that'll be fine. Another cool thing you could do with OBS is you can create an image slideshow on the fly, essentially. So the, the main thing is image files. So let's say add, and I can add individual files, or I can add a whole directory of files and anything in there that's an image file that will, uh, it'll try and use. But I'm going to add files directly, and I'm going to navigate to where these particular files are stored. Uh, And I'm going to pick some of these images up, but I'm going to work. I'm just going to highlight a, a chunk of them. 
Not all of them. Click OK. Right, now it's creating its own loop. It's got 8,000 milliseconds, eight seconds between one and the next, and then that's the transition speed. Uh, it doesn't have to be a fade. There's other options as well, but fade kind of works best. And click over here, right? It's, it's over the top of my face, and you can see the size of the images. First off, that is just zoomed in so far. So what I want to do is I want to right click in the red box of that. And I'm going to transform that so it first of all fits the screen. So it's it becomes a manageable sort of size. Now these they're not in the right orientation to fit in this particular square. And that is something to bear in mind when you're doing this. But I can actually put these up here. And instead of uh, instead of having a presentation, I can have a full set of images which just rotate around while I'm talking about whatever it is I'm talking about. You can also play videos as well alongside. So if I select media source, I'm not going to rename it anything special. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to browse to a video file. I'm going to set this as a loop, even though it's an hour long. Um, and I might want to speed it up a little bit. So I might have it 120%, which we'll see. Click OK. And uh, so I want this to, to be the background for that side. Now, that's done the whole, uh, whole screen. But what I could do is I can move the source down so it's below the level of the camera. And now it appears behind, the camera's on top. So now it looks like we've got sky rolling past. And uh, I want this because I want to put a window here. I'm going to use uh, some of my arms and do some, uh, some effects. And you can see the sky is not particularly blue at the moment. It's quite gray. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the sky and make sure I've got the sky selected. I'm going to add a filter. So I'm going to add some color correction to that. And I want to change the saturation on that. So now the blue is coming, coming through quite nicely. I could change the gamma on that so it can be a, a, a lot of deeper blues, change the contrast if I want to. Change the brightness a little bit. It's a little bit darker sky. If we turn that off and on again, we can see the difference that's made. And that's real time effects. Now I've got a blue sky rather than a grey sky. It's still running a little bit fast. So I will go back into the properties and we'll run a little bit slower. So I'm going to add, leave that running, I'm going to add in an image now. And this is going to be something I prepared earlier. So this comes from uh, my vigil book, from my Pelican vigil book, which was made by uh, Lord Richard of Salisbury. So he took my arms and basically made what looks like stained glass windows on the back of my vigil book front and back of my vigil book. So I've taken those images, scans of those images, and turned them into stained glass windows. And so I've got two, two images to load. First of all, I've got that one, which is just the black parts of this one. There's a mask. So I'm going to open that one. Um, okay, do the thing, fit the screen. And then I'm going to move that so that it's in the right place. I want it over here. Okay. 
And then I'm going to load the other image, which is going to end up over the top of that. And so that would be that one. Again, fit the screen. Well, at least set the height. And I'm going to reposition that one so that's underneath. So in this in this case, so that I can uh, move that and see See when it's in the right place. I should be able to turn it off without it jumping around. And you can actually use the cursor keys to move these things around. That looks fairly good. So I've got two two images there, one on top of the other. Uh, the uh, the one that is just black, I want that to remain on top. And the one underneath, which is image two, which has got all the color in it. I'm going to add a filter to that. So I'm going to add the color correction filter, which is going to give me these controls. And now I have control over the opacity of that particular image. Now, you can see what's happening in the background. We have some color because it's not, it's, it's with the reducing the opacity, it's making it that disappear. So I'm going to change the saturation and the color, whack that right up. And now we get into the effect. Change the gamma so we can see through, and we can see the clouds through the uh, through the color. Might change the contrast a little bit so we can see. There we go. Uh, got a little bit of a glow. So that's without the opacity that's what it looks like now in that uh, full color but because we're changing the opacity and bringing that down to a point where we can see through it i can see clouds going past there we go. as you see there's a little bit of a gap here and uh, i want that this to be seamless so i could just move the edge of this up here and and that would do it but I'm going to add another image. And again, these are all ones I've prepared before. This is going to be a gradient. Which is this, essentially. And again, I'm going to fit that screen. And then this, I'm going to move to here. So we've got black, and now we've got a gradient that goes to these. So covers that kind of thing. Now that's not using anything other than just uh, very simple basic effects. What we can do now, we can add in, we can add in uh, an effect and use some green screen. So I'm going to add a media source. And this one, is going to actually be uh, a green screen. It's going to be made with a green screen background. So, um, okay. So all of these are uh, little green screen videos of some description. So we'll have the dancing cow. You'll be able to see what I'm messing around with it, and then we'll turn that off afterwards. So I'm going to place this at the bottom of the screen. So the cow wanders off screen and then, yeah. As you can see, it's covering my the rest of me up at the moment, but that's not a problem. Now I can use Alt to crop some of this out if I wanted to, but it's not going to get rid of everything and you don't really need to do it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add uh, a chroma key filter. And uh, as you can see, that's uh, pretty much works straight away. It uh, doesn't really need much much else. Um, but you can play around with it with the settings until you get 
until you get it exactly as you need it to be. And it just needs moving down a little bit so it doesn't look like it's floating. There we go. So what I can do now is put that back into, uh, into non-looped mode, turn it off. And when it uh, appears on screen, it only appears the once. Comes on, does a little dance. There we go. And every time I turn it on, it'll start again. So the last thing that you need to absolutely know about is how to make this work in Zoom. And at the far side, you've got uh, what, what's a start virtual camera. So if you start that, as long as it's uh, highlighted like that. Now, OBS, the output of OBS is actually acting as a virtual camera now. So in the Zoom window, you can actually set, select, you can actually select OBS as your actual video camera, and then it will display whatever is on screen right now. Uh, so you will get, in my case, you'll get my arms and me as my video feed and the dancing cow when it appears. Well, there's some more advanced stuff. Uh, you can actually use OBS to record directly. So you can actually make video, put your presentation together and, uh, and then you can record it live essentially um, using OBS. Um, there is also a thing called studio mode. So if I want to tee up my next screen, I can tee that up now. This is the one that's going out live at the moment. The one with uh, the arms on the other one um is uh, currently uh, in waiting and you have a transition button <clears throat> you can decide what the transition is going to be but that doesn't actually happen until you press this and then you're on to the next scene uh, you will notice when uh, when the slideshow comes back from this this doesn't display all the uh, green screen and the, uh, the filters um, it doesn't, but they are still there. And when you actually go live, they appear. What does make it difficult to do is mess around with the filters in studio mode and then know what's going to happen when, uh, when you press transition. So that's worth bearing in mind. Um, now, what we haven't looked at the moment is the, uh, the profile part of this. And the profile is essentially the settings. So I'm going to come out of studio mode. And just go into settings for a minute. Now, you can save this, all of these settings, as a profile, so which you can then load in for different projects. The main thing that most people are going to want to do is change the video settings. At the moment, it's set to HD, which is which is fine. This computer can handle it; it's not a problem. But if you're on a slightly slower computer with less graphics capabilities, what you may need to do is to change that down to uh, twelve eighty seven twenty. It's uh, the SD format. So you may need to change that. You may want to change frame rates again, lower frame rates, lower memory use. But uh, it does depend on what the end product is going to be. Um, if you're recording something via Zoom, it doesn't make any difference if it's not 25 frames a second because Zoom only records video at 25 frames a second. The hotkeys are a useful thing to know about. You can set up different key commands for each scene, depending on what elements you have working in the scene. Now, if you look at the main cam one, we, we basically have very few options because we've only got one camera and that's all it's doing. We could show and hide the camera and we could we can make a button that automatically goes back to that scene. Uh, the slideshow one, a little bit more, you've got more stuff going on because you've got uh, the slideshow images that you could skip through. You could set up a button to uh, 
to scroll through the images instead of it being automatic, that kind of thing. Also, so while you're within the, uh, the scenes box there, you can use the uh, cursor controls up down to switch between various scenes. So you can set up a number of scenes that, uh, that you're going to use through your slideshow and just use the keyboard controls. Okay, just, just to look at audio for a minute. So I'm going to start a new scene and I am going to add a media source, which is going to be a, a video that's got some audio on it. And um, so if I browse to uh, something that has audio on it, So this one was made for uh, this uh, screen format, so it doesn't need resizing. But you'll notice at the moment, you can't hear it, although you can see that there's audio on it because you can see the uh, audio meters flapping up and down. Now there's two reasons why you can't hear it at the moment. And one is because uh, I'm recording this via Zoom and uh, the audio is not being shared. Uh, the other one is that this audio is currently mute, even though it doesn't look like it, which is uh, a slightly weird thing. So um, what I'm going to do is click on the little settings cog and I'm going to go to advanced properties and I'm going to select this media source. And I'm going to tell it that all I want to do is I want to monitor and output that audio. Now you can actually hear that audio, but uh, people on Zoom still won't be able to hear that because the audio is not being shared by Zoom. The next step is to, uh, in Zoom, is to share the sound only in the advanced settings on the uh, screen sharing options. Um, and uh, that, that way your, your computer sound will be broadcast by Zoom as well as uh, your video, which will now be virtual camera feed from OBS. So you can tell me anything and I'll listen.